from the John Nevada Broadcast Center. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Opinions with Joe Roush on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network. And now, here is Big Joe. Hello, Chicago Land. This is Big Joe, and this and you're listening to Opinion. Just want to start out saying hi to John, our engineer here, and a Merry Christmas to you and a Happy New Year, John. Wish you all the best. Well, thank you very much, Joe. Same to you, and uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And uh, hopefully that we'll have a real nice uh, Christmas season this year. Well, so far so good because we got the snow, we got the cold, so it's putting everybody in the Christmas spirit. You know, when you're out in these, uh, like, about a week or two ago, I was at Aruba, and it's so warm. It's You see Christmas trees and decorations, but you just not, it doesn't kind of get you in the mood because you don't have, you know, being from the Midwest, you got to have some cold, you got to have some cold out there, you got to have some snow out there to really get into the Christmas spirit. But, yeah, John, all the best to you, and uh, listeners, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, a healthy and wealthy one to all of you. And uh, I also would like to wish Kevin over at Ridgewood High School, the manager of Jack FM 89.7 WRHS Norridge, a Merry Christmas, and thank you for uh, all you do for us and for me and John here. Really appreciate it. And uh, you putting our show on the on the air for us. So a very mer- very Merry Christmas to you and a Happy New Year. And uh, you you can listen to us on Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network at www.windycityhometown.com. So, what else? Oh, I also want to give a plug to a friend of mine, B- Carl, who's the owner of Bee Gees Restaurant over on Irving Park Road, uh, just a couple blocks uh, west of Harlem there. I don't know the exact address. I apologize for that. But I'm sure anybody in this area knows Bee Gees. He's got one of the best pizzas in this area, in this neighborhood. So, uh... Maybe if you got a school event out there or something going on afterwards, go and have a pizza over by Bee Gees. Tell them Big Joe sent you, and he'll give you a free topping or something. Tell him he has to give you a free topping. Yeah, I think that's I think that's in the se- oh I lost my microphone. I think that's in the seventy four hundred block of Irving Park Road. Yeah, I, I think yeah, it's a couple blocks uh, yeah west of Harlem, right? Yeah, yeah, I know where it is. I've Oh, Bee Gees, sure, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah I've, I've been in. He's our... got really good pizza. That's there. right. He's he got does. a great yes. pizza. Yes. So. You got a little something, you got a a few of your friends or a group, you want to go have a pizza and a few pops, you go over there and tell Big Joe sent you and get yourself a free topping or something. Tell him you, I insist he give you one. (laughs) So here we are. It's the Christmas season, football season. We got cold, we got snow, we got it all going on. And before we get into all this Christmas stuff, because it's very touching and all that, and we all have different opinions about stuff, how about the Bears? Let's go with sports just a little bit here. You know, the Bears are in first place all by themselves right now because of that loss that Detroit took last night. And they lost on a 61-yard field goal by Baltimore. How lucky was that for the Chicago Bears? I think it's great. Two games left, and the last one's with Green Bay, who's also in the running because they're in second place officially right now. So it's a real tight thing. Where the opinion comes in on this is, is it better to have Cutler? Is he our guy? Should we stick with him? Or do we go with the backup? He was doing so well. You know, Cutler threw two interceptions at the beginning of the game. Uh, He came back and threw three touchdowns in the fourth quarter, so he came back strong. I don't know. What's your opinion? Do you st- you go you stick with the starter who's maybe a little rusty, or you go with the guy who's hot and that's the backup quarterback, Josh? What do we do? My opinion, it's the coach's choice. But no, seriously, I think you got to go with Cutler. You got to stick because he he's the franchise quarterback. He's the guy. I don't know, and you know we get a couple more guys coming back on the defense. Maybe that'll get a little better. Because it's very important that we win these next couple of games, without a doubt. So share your opinion with your friends. Give you something to talk about. Not argue about it. Opinions aren't arguments. They're opinions. Always remember that. We don't argue. We're entitled to our own opinion. Respect other people's opinions. That's what life is all about. All right, so now we got Christmas coming up. 
You know, New Year's, which is a week after Christmas, everybody makes these New Year's resolutions about losing weight or doing this or doing that. You know what? How about you give yourself a Christmas present? You know, if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else. You have to make yourself happy in order to make other people happy. So how about giving yourself a Christmas present? And it could be a, one of many things. Myself, for example, and that I like talking about myself, but I don't know who else to pick on. No, I'm not really picking on myself, but, you know, over the last few months, I, 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 I lost some weight. Now, not that I was obese or nothing like that, but I was a, I was a pretty big guy. And, uh, I lost, I lost a few pounds. Let me tell you, it, it changes your life. I mean, I feel so much better. I mean, I could bend over and tie my shoes without, without, it, it still breathe at the same time. Let me just put it to you that way. You'll know what I mean as you get older, okay? <laughs> Why are you laughing, John? <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> The engineer's laughing at me. He's getting a kick out of that one. But, no, you, you give yourself a present. You know, do something nice for yourself. Uh, is it, you know, if you feel you, you need to lose some weight, make make, a, make an effort to lose lose 5 or 10 pounds to make yourself feel better. Because not only will it make you healthier, it also gives you a little more confidence in how you feel and how you express yourself. And that's very important in life. You should always feel good about yourself. Okay, we're going to take a break from that for a minute. I think we got a caller, huh, John? Okay, hello. Who do we have on the line? This is Big Hi, Joe with Opinion. Sorry? Hi, it's Kevin. I listen to your show on Jack FM. Hey, hi, Kevin. How are you? Good, good. I have a question for you. With okay. With Italian-American background, and this being the Christmas season, what are your thoughts and opinions of Dominic the Christmas Donkey, the song Dominic the Christmas Donkey? <laughs> I love it. I Very think, good, because some, some people do and some people don't. No. And I don't know if you're aware, there's, there's been some controversy with stations that play it and don't play it. No, you know what it is? You know, people are, I think sometimes people just get too caught up in stuff, you know. You know, life is about having fun, you know. In my opinion, that you should enjoy things. If there's something you don't like, then you just ignore it, because somebody else will like it, and that's their business. Everybody sees things differently and take in. Uh, see, you know, takes them differently. If it's something you don't like, if there's something I don't like, I don't listen to it. If it's something I don't like to see, I don't look at it. Somebody else might enjoy it. There's a that's like art. You know, people walk into a in, into a and look at stru uh, sculptures and stuff like that. What the heck is that to say? And some people look at it and think it's beautiful. It's just all how you see things, you know. Well, very good. Well, keep up the good work, and I enjoy listening to your show. And, Kevin, thank you for everything you do. I really appreciate it. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. You too. Take you care. You know, not only do you have that, uh, that uh, um, song, um, uh, Dominic the, the Donkey, but also Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. That's another one that uh, there's a lot of controversy about. And they've been playing that for 100 years. Since 1984, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, it's a great song. It's, some people don't like it, don't listen to it. That's all. Okay, Kevin, thanks for calling, buddy. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So anyhow, it's, uh, thanks, Kevin, for calling. That was really nice. It's it's always good to get a caller in here to help, uh, you know, see how other people are, what they're thinking about or what their opinions are on stuff. I don't know. Dick, hey, we didn't ask Kevin what his opinion was on that. He never gave it to us. I should have let him go too soon, huh? I should have hung on to him a little longer. I thought he was going to go when he mentioned it, uh, Italian-American background about Christmas Eve and what we eat and stuff because that's a huge day for us. We do all fish. That's an old Italian thing. They do all fish on Christmas Eve. And, um, you know, it's it, it's it's really kind of a neat thing because we, we stick to it every year. And um, my aunt's got a uh, home up, a summer home up in Antioch. And we all, all my cousins and my aunts, uncles, whoever could make it, my kids, my grandkids, we go up there. There'll be like 60 of us up there this Christmas Eve. And all we do is we got off fish, we cook, then we play a little game where my aunt, who's 87, 88 years old, reads the night before Christmas. And then every word, I don't know, certain words she says, you got to pass a present to the left or to the right. And everybody's passing gifts around and 
it's just the right. Then we do a big bonfire. It's a really, really great way to celebrate the holidays with your family. And that's a that's a big crowd. All right, anyhow, back to what I was talking about is you want to do something for yourself, you know, whether it's lose a few pounds, you know, straighten out your room, get rid of some clothes, get some new clothes, do something that makes you feel good, you know. Is, is your car filthy all the time? Would you be happier with a clean car? Just do it. You'll get used to it. You'll like it. You'll feel better about yourself. And feeling better about yourself is what it's all about because when you feel good, it, it, it shows in your in your in your actions, how you treat people. You'll even be nicer to people because you'll be happier and there's nothing better in the world than people being happy and making other people happy. And speaking of that, that's what we're supposed to be doing this time of year is making people happy. Now, is there a a neighbor you have that's elderly, has got snow, and he's out, out there shoveling, which is the worst thing in the world for that guy to be doing. Can can you go out there, take the shovel, give him five minutes, ten minutes, and shovel the snow for that guy? You know how happy that, that would be your Christmas present to him. That's what you do at Christmas time. You do stuff for other people. You know, help them out. Help out a neighbor. Help out a relative. Call a relative that you haven't talked to. How many times? You know, I had a friend. It's kind of a sad story, but it's 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 it's, it's a good story. A friend of mine had a had a long t- you know childhood friend, a buddy, his whole life, talk all the time, but they lived kind of far apart in different states. He lived in Illinois here, and his buddy lived up in Michigan or something. I think it was, and. uh you know, they always talk on the phone. They, oh, we got to get together. We got to get together. But he never made the time to go see the guy. Well, the guy passes away. Well, guess what? He made the time to go to his funeral. Well, what good is it then? He's gone. You want to make time to see people while they're around. So go see an, an, an aunt, an uncle you haven't seen in a while that you talk to, that you, you love, you care about, but you never make time for. Make their day. You know, go visit them. Say hi if you can. If they're out of state, too far away, give them a call. They love you. Believe it or not, just because they're a hundred years older than you doesn't mean they don't want to talk to you. They uh, age doesn't change their minds. Believe me, as long as their minds intact, they love talking to their their family, especially the young ones. So, give yourself a present by making somebody happy. It'll make you feel good. Make them feel good. It all works out. So, the uh, was about a week ago, I believe. Here, talk about a Christmas present. About a week ago, maybe a few more, a little longer, up in Canada, I believe the airline was called WestJet. Did you hear this, John? No. You ain't gonna believe this story. This, this, I'm telling you, if you go online, you could probably look it up. It'll bring a tear to your eye. An airline called WestJet. People were coming, I don't know, they were coming from point A to point B, but when they were at the airport, the bo- before they boarded the plane, they had like a kiosk, and it was like a TV screen, and there was a Santa Claus in there talking to you, you know, like video. And he was asking the people that were getting on the plane, what, what, what was their Christmas wish? Little kids, moms, dads. And they were asking for anything from, you know, iPads to socks and underwear and T-shirts and TVs and stuff like that. There was a hundred, I don't know, maybe a little more than a hundred people, a little more than a hundred people that were on the, that were boarding the plane that talked to this kiosk, this Christmas guy, Christina Claus, I mean, and uh, they all boarded the plane. Well, what WestJet was doing, what WestJet was doing was. As soon as those people board the plane, they got all that information, they sent out a crew of people shopping. They went out and bought all the presents that all those people asked for, wrapped them, complete. Bought them, brought them to the airport, wrapped them. So when the people got off the airplane and went to their to the, the, the luggage belt where they go pick up their luggage, the first thing they came out was wrapped Christmas presents with their names on it. 
It was unbelie it was an unbelievable sight. Now that's a Christmas miracle. Because they did something that not one person would have, have expected. These people are sitting there looking for their luggage, getting off an airplane, and they're getting Christmas presents from an airline. It was unbelievable. And I'm telling you, if you go look it up, you'll, it'll bring a tear to your eye. It was a, a very, very nice thing for somebody to do, especially a, an airline, which they normally don't do much for anybody except uh, charge you for everything. Like how many bags you got, <laughs> how much do they weigh. So... And those are Christmas miracles. You should, again, everybody should go out there and make their own miracle. Go buy a present. You could donate, donate it. You could do whatever, you know. Give it to an unexpecting friend. You know, just wishing somebody a, a Merry Christmas with a big smile as you pass them in a the hallway or on the street could, could make their day. And make their day. Okay. There's also another story about Christmas. It's called Christmas Jars. There's a book out called Christmas Jars. And what it's about is all year long, you throw your change into a jar. And then at Christmas time, you give that jar to an unexpecting friend, neighbor, somebody who needs it without letting them know it was you. They, they never let, you don't let them know where it came from. It's a, it's a nice book, and it's got great stories in it. There, there's stories where there's, here, I got a story here from a woman in Pennsylvania, 44 years old with five kids, MS. She's got MS, can't, had to retire from her job, couldn't work anymore, husband, she couldn't drive. Her husband had to take off work because she couldn't be home alone for more than two hours a time because of her disease. So they were struggling. So on Christmas Eve morning, they opened their door, and there's a bag with a jar in it in the book. It, it made her whole, you know, they're struggling. They don't have money. They got the kids, and this, this made her whole holiday. There's hundreds of stories like that all over. It's just amazing, amazing how happy a small gift can make somebody. And I tell you, there, there's nothing that feels better than that. A small gift makes you very happy. So anyhow, you should get out there and help somebody out. Make your own miracle. Help the elderly. Help a friend. Uh, just do something nice for somebody. And make and be happy, make them happy. Okay, we're gonna uh, take a we're gonna take a short break here from uh, John Devia's Broadcasting Center on the Northwest Side. Uh, once again, we want to thank Kevin at Ridgewood High School, Jack FM eighty nine point seven WRHS Norwich, and you're listening to Big Joe. This is Opinion at Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, www.windycityhometown.com. Thank you. From the John Nevada Broadcast Center, you are listening to Opinions with Joe Rausch on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network. And now, back to Big Joe Rausch. Okay, Chicagoland, and we're back here for a moment. This is Big Joe with Opinion, Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network at www.windycityhometown.com. Uh, John DeVita's Broadcasting Center, we thank John very much for uh, having us, and we also want to thank Kevin once again from Ridgewood High School at Jack FM 89.7 WHR, Norwich. Um, I want to go on and get on the subject here about the difference between uh, gas, electric, gas and electric cars. I mean, now we've been having, the funny thing about the gas engine today is we've been using it for over 100 years. Now, anything that came out 100 years ago has been modified 
updated and it's completely redone to modern days of today. Why is it the gas engine, even though its performance is better, it's been updated, how come we're still using gas? You know, do you think, I mean, we got electric cars, but the number one thing about cars is gas. You think by after 100 years, they find a, a, something b better to run engines off of, a better way to run them, except gas because of the pollution and everything else. Or is it just the best thing? Is it the best way to do it? And that's why we're still doing it. Electric cars are nice, but you know what? You got to put, how far can you, how far can you go on an electric car on a good day? How about the weather? Weather plays a big effect on electri electricity. You know, you've got those uh, DV, DV, the bicycles in the city of Chicago that you can rent. You can pick one up at different locations, drop them off at different locations. Well, they're elect they have electric in them too to, to operate. Not the bicycle itself, but the 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 the, the, the where you park them. That's all done on electric. Well, in the wintertime, they have a lot of trouble with it because the cold weather wears down the electric right away. So your opinion, should we, should we spend more time, more money on figuring out if, how to better improve the electric operation of a, a motor vehicle? Or do we just stick with the gas and leave the electric alone? I mean, they say we've got more oil than we'll ever use, I would think. They say that they're, they, they, we've been using oil like crazy for 100 years, and we still have plenty more. So I, I, I'm assuming that they know we're never going to run out. I don't know. Wouldn't you think you'd run out sooner or later, John? Well, I tell you, Joe, I would be all for electric for electric vehicle. Of course, you take a, a van like mine, and once I get a lot of stuff in there, a lot of broadcasting equipment, like when I used to do remote broadcasting, or when I step, take stuff from here to Wisconsin or back again, I mean, you, you have a lot, a lot of weight in the uh, in, in the vehicle, and um, it just takes, you know, it just takes it more ener energy. Yeah. But I tell you, if we ever went to, uh, uh, went to electric, electric vehicles, I think the CEOs from these gas companies, uh, gasoline companies with... Uh, would uh, uh, have a fit because... They'd be jumping off a building. Yes, that's right. Now, you know what, what, what really aggravates me is the fact is that I've been listening to the, on the news, oh, the price of gas is going down, the price of gas is going down, the price of gas is going down. By the, by the end of the year, it's going to be way down, way down. And just uh, just today, listening to the news, uh, it, uh, it, the, the price of gas went up five or six or seven cents yeah. uh, within the last week. Yeah, I know. You... you you see, you see a gas price for two two dollars and ninety nine cents. You think it's a great deal. Three dollars a gallon is ridiculous. I mean, I rem I remember well, it was it was years ago, but as kids, I mean, gas was a quarter a gallon. You know, paying four dollars four fifty a gallon is is to us it's crazy. But it's a lot worse across the world, let me tell you. Joe, when I first started with the telephone company back on October 10th of 1957, there was a, a Sinclair gas station over on the corner of uh, Harlem and uh, Tui Avenue. And I used to go over and, and get gas. It was, was 28 cents a gallon. Plus, you got s and green stamps. Yeah, remember the green stamps? Yes, sir. I sure, I sure do remember that, oh, yeah. Oh, man, we used to... Blew up books and books and books of those things. But now, I mean, now, uh, like I like I just said a minute ago, uh, and 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 up in Wisconsin, the, the gas station that I go to up there is a mobile gas station. Yeah. Okay. My sister had called me uh, last Wednesday. She says, uh, "Jesus is the the price of gasoline at Mobile is two ninety eight a gallon." I says, "Wow!" I says, uh, "You know so." I says, as soon as I get up there, I'm going to go over and I'm going to fill up because I get up there on on Friday afternoon. You right, know where right, I'm right, at right, up there. Right. Sure enough, I get up there, the gas was three ten. Yeah, they probably jacked it up for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now another thing that really is 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 aggravated me. For months and months and months, at a Walmart store in Lake Geneva. 
a, a, a dozen eggs, a dozen large eggs were a dollar sixty-eight a dozen, which I think is outrageous. I was there this past Friday. Yeah. The price of eggs is a dollar eighty-eight a dozen. <laughs> you were made a dollar sixty-eight. You know, and now why? Because they know that. People are doing baking. Yeah. Wim, women are, are cookies, uh, man. Make, baking make, make cookies. cookies. All, yeah, they need butter and eggs. Yeah, butter and eggs and so, sugar. So they raised the price of eggs to a dollar yeah. eighty-eight. And over here at another store close close by here, and I don't want to mention the name of it, they were almost two dollars a dozen at at the one food store here. And I said to the manager who's standing right there, I says, you know something, this is ridiculous. I says, I wouldn't buy those eggs at that price. I says, they'll probably sit there and wait till they start clucking before I, <laughs> before I go there. Now, after the, the holidays are over with, they'll be 49 cents a dozen, you watch and Right, see. yeah, they'll go down because yep. they're going to get rid of them. Okay, we have a caller on the line. Okay, who do you have? We got Mr. Jack Ryan. Hi, Jack. Hello, Jack. The big guy. Hey, big time. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? You've been busy over there? Yeah. How's the big guy doing? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too. Uh, I was just, uh, was on, I just got back from Dominic's. It's empty. Yeah, I went in that store the other day. You know, Tom, I went in that Dominic's. I just wanted a box of pasta. I wanted some mustard. Trolley news just to boil some pasta. They, uh -huh. they didn't even have a box of pasta in that store. Well, Joe, you know who ended with, up with a lot of it, don't you? You did. You, yes, but it, it, you, as you know, it goes for charity. Yeah. Oh, this is a great story. John, you got to hear this. Listeners, there was a great story. Tom, I'm gonna, I want you to tell this story, but I want to just get it started. Tom brought over, Tom's got a neighbor, and he was a, a, a Jewish man, right, Tom? Right, uh, and, and the thing about it was he uh, he plowed my driveway because he had this new mower, and it was 6 in the morning. I said, gee, you know, then we start talking about Dominic's. He knows that I'd get food. Right. And he said, boy, that's a shame. I said, well, I'm going to try to buy some because it'll be 50% off. He said, I'm going to bring you a check tomorrow. No, but didn't you bring him some cookies or something first oh, time? Yes. For, for uh, Hanukkah. For Hanukkah. I, that, that's good. Start at the beginning. It, it, yeah. It, it, was, it, it was candy, Joe. Yeah, okay. It was, uh, you know, uh, and it was just a few pieces. It wasn't much, but it was just a gesture. Right. And all of a sudden, he comes by the next day with a check for $500. For you to buy food to donate to the for the poor. Right. And then since that time, I've collected another 250 so when I bought the close to eight hundred dollars worth of food at Dominic's, I had like about six or seven carts full. Now isn't that beautiful, Tom? Absolutely. And the nice thing about that, Joe, is that it uh, it will last because it's dated next year. A lot of the products, soup, right? You know, vegetables, things like that. Yeah, that stuff lasts a long time anyhow. Anything dry or canned in the box, they last a long time. Right. You know, Tom, it's funny because I'm glad you called because I was just talking about the Christmas spirit and miracles on Christmas, and that's like that's a, that's a that's a that's a that's like a small Christmas miracle. It doesn't take much. A small gesture can turn into a big thing. You know, you're you're absolutely right. And and uh, when you see these people, uh, you know, our friend uh, Dave. You know, Dave. Yes, I do. He, you know, a couple uh, before Thanksgiving, he got me eight turkeys and some food. And I gave it out, and, and one fellow had uh, tears in his eyes. He was having a tough time yeah. for his family. Yeah, it's that's it's it's amazing how, like you say, a small gesture can really, really ch turn somebody's day around. You know? Yeah. In any event, uh, what have some of the callers been talking about? Sports too? Sports? Yeah, I was talking about the Bears earlier. About you know, uh, who should they have quarterback? Was it a good? Is it a good idea to keep Cutler as the starter, or you know, go go with the backup because he's so hot? You know, we well, got yes, two, uh, we got two games I, left, and it's very important that we win a bowl because we're on top, and the only thing we can do now is lose it. You know what I mean? Right. Well, if you win, don't forget, uh, if you win both games, uh, you're in. If you uh, you got to play the Packers the last game, and then, you know, Philadelphia is, is at Philadelphia. They may not be easy. No, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy at all. But I think that uh, uh, it's, it's a great way to end the season, at least to be there with all the problems and all the different, uh, uh, you know, things that happened to him. He was out about five weeks. 
Right, right. Well, not only him, but how about all the, the the defense, the guys they lost there? You know, the yes. Bears are very lucky to be with. They they must, they really came together as a team to withstand the injuries that they that fell upon them. You're absolutely right. All right, we're gonna we're, time. Hold on a minute, okay? We're gonna take okay. a short break here. Hold on. Okay. Good. And how's John doing there? Good. John's doing good. Yeah, yeah, he's good. What, now, did you spoil him like we used to? Did you bring him any donuts or anything? No, I didn't bring him no donuts. Like, oh, I should have. You're right. Remember when we'd stop at all those places and pick up things for him? Yeah, we used to, when we were doing the morning show, he, yeah. We used to bring all that stuff from, uh, what was the name of that place? Uh, oh. Wasn't that Clyde's? Well, Clyde's was one place. That was, the, yeah, but no, no. no the, it was from. Uh, that Italian joint. Uh, yeah, oh, jeez. Boy, uh, the tiny uh, ice, whatever, it doesn't matter. The cannoli drink yeah. is really good. It was cannolis. It was, uh, gee, I can't think of his name. Isn't that funny? Yeah. The place over on, on uh, Mannheim and Lake. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, yeah I'll, was... I'll think of it. Uh, no biggie. But yeah, Tom, it, it, what you do, Tom, with helping out, you know, bringing all that food every day, every week to the church and for all those people is amazing. And, when people shared it with you, I mean, how many times have we gone out and picked up stuff that we that we brought you guys, you separated and brought it down to those people? It's just the one. It's, it's amazing how many people want to help once they know what you're doing with it. You, you know? know, you're absolutely right. One, the lady at the uh, Kiwanis, the president at the candy company, she started a, a box, a big box inside of her place. The thing has been filled twice, and I've been picking up food. And the nice thing about it, it's it's stuff, you know, for the kids, peanut butter, soup, vegetables pasta, things that will last and that, that are good, nutritious for you. Right, right, right. Not that candy. So, that's so cool. other than that, what do you want, for about an hour? Yeah, we got about another 20, 25 minutes. Well, that's good. That, that's a great thing. And then this goes over the Internet? This goes on the Internet in, uh, in our friend, in John's friend Kevin at Ridgewood High School. He's the uh -huh. manager there at Jack FM, 89.7 WRHS in Norwich. He's going to air it tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. on 89.7. Oh, event. that's terrific. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. How long have you been doing this, Joe? Uh, well, this is about our fourth show, huh, John? Yeah, it's, yeah I think it's been longer than that. Four, 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 it's about, we've been doing it for about four or five months. Has, has uh, John, has he's still been doing the, uh, uh, the what do you call them, uh, the professors, too. Don't, you know the, the where he has the the famous people come in from Chicago, the professors they call them. You meet the, meet the Chicago historians. Yes. Yeah, we we did it yesterday, in fact. Oh yeah, well yeah, well you know what else? My son just wrote that book, it was published, uh, and it's uh, a historic. It's about the architecture of uh, Barry Byrne uh -huh. in Chicago, famous guy with uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. So. Uh, well, John knows my son because he, he came a couple times in broadcast, right, right John? That, that's right. right. Yes, right. Is, is Vince uh, here in town or is he still uh, out of state? He's, he's out of California, but they'll be in for the holiday. Uh-huh. Very good. Well, tell him I said uh, hello and tell him I wish him a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He was very good. He was very instrumental on our program when he was, uh, when he was coming here. Well, that's very nice of you to say that, John. I really will pass that on to him. Okay, Tom. That was, Tom, I really appreciate your call, and thank you for everything you do. Hey, by the way, thanks for the breakfast party the other day. It was very well, nice. I, I thank you because everybody raved about all the food. Yeah, it, it was, was tremendous. Yeah. You did a great job. I appreciate it. My pleasure, Tom. Merry Christmas okay, and take uh, care. Happy New Year, buddy. Thanks for calling, Tom. Okay, so back to what we were talking about with this gas and electric. You know what? Electric would be great, but I don't think we're ever going to get by with it. We got to go with gas, and you know what? We should be so. I want. I wanted to talk about this because I'm going to share my opinion with you because there's something you got to know. We spend, we spend the least on gas in this country than anywhere else in the world, pretty much. You go out to Europe, it's five, six dollars, seven dollars a gallon of gas. Well, they go, they buy it by liters. In 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 Aruba. Aruba, listen to this. Aruba is 18 miles from Venezuela, where where the oil comes from, and they probably pay like they probably pay 50 cents a liter for gas. 18 miles, 18 miles across the water in Aruba, they pay 
Two fifty a liter, two seventy a liter. It comes out to almost seven dollars, eight dollars a gallon of gas. So, as bad as it is here, we're lucky because we pay less than everybody else. So let's just stick with our gas, in my opinion, and be happy with it. Okay, we have another caller. Is this Jack? Yes, it is. Hello, Jack. Hello, are you there? Yeah, how are you? Oh, I'm pretty fair, pretty fair. This uh. This whole business of this super jackpot with the mega millions has got me. Five hundred and sixty-eight million of, uh, dollars. Is my still there? Yeah, five hundred and sixty-eight million dollars. Yeah, well, regardless of what it is, the whole idea of legalized gambling—if you're going to have it in a, in a state—it should be sort of, it should be sort of, it should be subject to market, not to some kind of a commission. Which invites favoritism. It's not all about corruption and even getting a license in the first place. Well, There's no, so you and I and Mr. Davida could pool our resources and open one somewhere, as long as we comply with all local ordinances and we're approved at our proper, uh, you know, insurance and bonding and whatever else. Not have to uh, stand in line by some phony, uh, phony uh, state commission to choose if we're going to get it or not. You know, whether you wh whether you have the right to have to to have a gambling sorry, license. Is that what you're saying? Here we are in the city of Chicago. You know, otherwise so-called world-class city, and we should have a, a land-based actual casino, not a boat somewhere because it's not in land anymore. Some phony excuse. Well, yeah, like there that. are no there are no more boats. That that that's that's passe now. There are there are there could be land-based now. That's why they got that one in Rosemont or in uh, Des Plaines. But the city of Chicago should you know they you know they passed that law. If you got a liquor license, you get five poker machines now. Mm -hmm. Do you know about that? I, I personally never go to the boats or anything like that. Yeah, we have been to Las Vegas and we have been to a casino in California run by some Indian tribe, but it's not my cup of tea. I do play the lottery for the hell of it because uh, I mean you can't win unless you play, right? You can't win unless you play, my friend. That's right. But you know what's funny about that? When you first start a conversation about the the gambling, you know the state of Illinois for years there was outlawed gambling. There's no gambling allowed. But the state's been gambling for, for 40 years with the lottery. So they gave, they gave themselves the right to gamble, but the rest of the people aren't allowed to. You know what they do in New York? I, I was in a place in New York. They play Keno over the TV in, a, in bars. It's state-run. So you can sit at the bar having a beer, and you can play Keno. They got TVs. You can play Keno while you're sitting there. Which I thought was kind right, of right. cool. That was kind of cool because Keno's a mild game. You can't, you know, you, you can bet two dollars. You know, you're not going to kill. You're not going to hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're doing that in the suburb, suburban Cook County now, but not in the city. I know. Yeah, with the machine. No, well, that, the deal, you know. The deal with the poker machines is, uh, which, you know, my opinion on that is, I guess it's fair because the state says it's okay. They let each village. Or each town decide on their own if they want to have it or not. Yeah. So you know it's it's done independently per per town. You know, like like Rosemont, you Rosemont doesn't have it, so the bars in Rosemont can't have poker machines. But Shil, uh, you if Shiller Park doesn't have it, but you go to Franklin Park and they have them. So I don't know why everybody just doesn't jump in. So it's a, it's a, it's fair trade across the line. So everybody's got it makes no sense uh, sometimes. No, you, you would think. And as far as a local, local casino hotel sort of a complex, might we make a suggestion that occurred to us recently? What's you that? notice I'm using the editorial we. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, take the old uh, the old big post office building downtown. That's that's a fortress and it's huge. You can put in a couple of casinos or more. Plus, have a uh, retail space, have a uh, hotel space. You're talking, you're talking about the one that crosses it. over the Eisenhower, the old build, yeah. the old post office building. Yeah. How beautiful would that be if they redid that, that building and lit it up into a casino with the lights and stores and and it's right there as you're. It's the first thing you see entering this city. You know, what I mean, besides the skyline and all that, but you go right underneath it. How cool would that be? That is a great idea. That is a great idea. Mm. Yeah, that would be cool to make that. A I noticed uh, maybe, maybe tonight uh, it might be a good night for 
expressing opinion like that. I know it's a full moon. I would drive over to the airport just before the midway. So it's a full moon today. Is right. It's a full moon. It's it's a good day for opinions, isn't it? Okay. Well, I got to cut it short here. I'm picking my daughter up uh, from the orange line. All right, my so. friend. Well, thank you for calling. You have a very merry Christmas okay, and a happy luck. New Thanks Year. Take care. Well, that was nice of Jack to call in. But yeah, he, he's got a good point, boy. If they if they legalized gambling in the city of Chicago, which you, they probably should by now, would really help out the city with their financial problems, you know. And uh, you know the that post office be beautiful. The only downside is, but there's really nothing you could do about it. People are gonna, some people just it's, have an addiction, like alcohol or anything else, and they get stuck on that gambling. And they lose everything they have. But you know what? You can't not have something because of a few individuals that are out of control. So, in my opinion, let it roll, baby. Get the gambling going. Open a casino in Chicago. I think that would be an awesome spot. The old post office would be awesome. Right there in the city. Man. I don't know. What do you, what do you feel about that gambling thing, John? Oh, that would be a nice place. Like you said, uh, as you come into Chicago, they uh, uh, modernize that building and light it all up and all that. That would be, oh, that that would be a beautiful sight. Wouldn't uh, it? I'm right by the river there. You yeah. come over the mm-hmm. river and you come underneath that building. It would be really sharp, man. Really, really sharp. I'd like to see that one day. I love, wonder what your guys' opinion is on that. So, oh, we might have another caller here, huh, John? We do. Who do we have on the line, John? His name is John. Hey, John, how are you? Very good, very good. I understand you're doing a program about opinions. Yes, I am, John. We got an opinion about something? Yeah, and it's topical. Uh, my opinion is we should we should uh, drop Happy Holidays and go back to the traditional Merry Christmas. Well, without a doubt. And you know what? I personally make it a point to say Merry Christmas. So do I. Because this whole Happy Holiday thing is wrong. I mean, it's not that it's wrong. It's just not what it is. It's Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. That's right. Okay, not Happy Holidays because it's Christmas. I always say, you know, George Bailey didn't didn't run through the, the streets of, of Bedford Falls shouting Happy Holidays. No, he did not. He yelled Merry Christmas. You're right. And, and Bing Crosby didn't do a song called White Holiday. <laughs> You know, John, you, you're making some very good points, man. And Ebenezer Scrooge was not the main character in a book called A Holiday Carol. No, it's A Christmas Carol. You're <laughs> right. Boy, you know what? That's Those are very good points to, for, to put out there. I, that's really nice, John. I didn't even think that. But, yeah, it's a shame. I, I wish uh, I wish people would have respected it a little more and keep it as Merry Christmas and not generalize it as Happy Holidays because of whatever reason they want to do that. I Whenever people whenever people say happy holidays to me, I very politely back say Merry Christmas, and then usually say, Oh yeah, they usually say, Oh yeah, Merry Christmas, Merry. Right. Not, you know, it's like it's like you're reminding them of the way it used to be. You right. Know? And, you know, and some people, I don't think they mean anything by it. They just it seems like it's easier or something. It's, I a, don't it's know. like falling into a rut. I exactly. Mean, you hear it on TV all the time. The commercials, everything is your holiday tree, your holiday co- what holiday tree. What holiday is the tree there for? It's for, it's for Christmas. You don't have you don't you don't have a Thanksgiving tree. No, and and people who are Jewish do not put up a tree for Hanukkah, and you don't put it up for New Year's. Right. So what is it? You know, it's a Christmas tree. I always like to I always like to say you know Jack Benny was a very religious Jew, and yet every year on his radio show he would always have a Christmas program. I've listened to these old time radio shows. And he would always have a program. He'd be wishing people a Merry Christmas. He was apparently wasn't offended by it. Right. And why should you be? That's right. You know, again, it's all about respecting other people's opinions or other people's rights. That's right. John, if you recall, that was Joe Gentile's pet peeve. Oh, he, okay. Remember that? Uh, I don't know if you were up at the studios, but a couple times people would come and say, uh, Happy Holidays. He says, No. Merry Christmas. That's right. Well, I, I, I salute him for that. Yes, that was his pet peeve. He always uh, corrected people say, no, it's Merry Christmas, not not Happy Holidays. That's right. 
That's right. And that's the way we like it, and that's the way we're going to do it. And you know what, John, I, I love you for doing just what you do. When they say happy holidays, you reply to them, Merry Christmas. That's right. Because in, our, in my opinion, in yours and John's, it's a Merry Christmas and not Happy Holidays. Right. Well, thank you for that. And hopefully, hopefully we'll straighten out a few other people one at a time. I think it's. I think you're, you're seeing, I notice more and more in the stores, you're seeing signs again that say Christmas. For a while there, everything was holiday, holiday. Right. But I'm noticing more and more. I was, I was in Macy's downtown. I saw signs with the word Christmas on it. I've been in other stores in the area. I think they're getting the message. I think they've gotten enough uh, pushback from people that they realize they overdid it with this happy holidays bit. And uh, and you're seeing a resurgence of Christmas. And you know what? I, I I think it means more when you say Merry Christmas. Sure. You know what I mean? It's got more feeling to it than happy. Ho- happy holidays just like blowing somebody off. You know, hey, happy holidays. Merry Christmas is, I, I, it seems like just... It means more when you say it. At least that's how I feel, you know? You know, when, when Bing Crosby, they, they had that song, which is a nice song, Happy Holidays, that was in Holiday Inn. They sang that on New Year's Eve. It had nothing to do with Christmas when, when Crosby sang that tune in Holiday Inn. It was a New Year's Eve song. That's right. So it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't in any way supposed to replace, you know, Merry Christmas. Uh. But... Uh, I'm 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 kind of optimistic that maybe we've turned a corner on this, and you're seeing you're seeing uh, people going back to the to the Merry Christmas greeting. Well, we could only hope, right? Right. We could only hope. Okay. Well, John, thank you for calling, and I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a healthy, wealthy New Year. And as Ebenezer Scrooge would say, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. Everyone is right. Thank you. Thank you, John. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Anyhow, the caller before John, Jack, mentioned something about the lottery and the five, you know, and now this Powerball or Mega Ball or whatever kind of thing they got going on tonight is worth $568 million. Now, everybody's got to have an opinion on that one because... Is it really, really right for one person to win all that money? Not that one, you know, they could, two or three people could win it, but so you know, the you know, the odds are it could be a one individual. See, in my opinion, that's wrong. I think when you get a, a jackpot like that, they should have, they should just keep pulling numbers until they, you know, you got five hundred sixty-eight million, then you should have. Maybe 50 winners. Give them all 10 million or something. I don't know. I just think that they should share the wealth. I think that's just too much money for one person to win. Now, I'm not saying it's too much money for one person in general because if you go out there and you work your butt off and you and you bring your net wealth up to $568 because you're a hard worker and an intelligent person, then you deserve all that. But to win it, it's like too much money for one person to win. I mean, what would they wouldn't even know what to do with it. It's crazy. I would love to know what the opinion of anybody else out there would think about that. I can't imagine one person winning $568 million. I could imagine what I would do with it if it was me, though. I could tell you that. <laughs> right, John? Yeah. I think if I go buy a plane and then you'd never see me again, I'd be traveling everywhere in the world I can. That'd be all over the place. What an entourage. Wouldn't that be fun, huh, John? That's for sure. Take that. You have to, you'd have to go hide out at your house up north so nobody would find you. Be begging, be asking to borrow money or taking money from you. That's the other thing when you win all that kind of money. That's you, right. You become rich overnight, and what happens? You got so many friends you forgot you had or never knew you had. Everybody looking to borrow some money. Everybody wanting something. That's a shame, too. That's really a shame. That nobody cares until you got money, and then all of a sudden you got all new friends. You know, when the lottery first started, many a few years ago, whenever it first started, one of the guys I worked with at Illinois Bell said, "Hey, John, if you ever won the lottery, what would you do? Would you would you quit or retire?" I said, "Heck no! I stay here and make everybody more miserable because I've got the money." To <laughs> pay. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is even if you got the money, what do you do with you? You can't not do nothing, you know. I mean, not that you got to work, but you got to do something. 
even though that one guy that won uh, a while back won a lot of money, he said that just managing his money is a full time job when you have that much money. Oh yes. I could. I, what a, what a job that would be, huh? I would really hate to have to do that. Manage my money, huh? My money's easy to ma- manage now. I take the change out of one pocket, the dollar <laughs> bills out of the other pocket. It's managed. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You and me both, pl- pal. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to worry too much about other than anything else. I don't need an accountant to, to take to ca- take care of my checkbook. Thirty seconds and it's balanced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. But yeah, the the lottery is it's a good thing. I just wish um, when it gets up that high, it you know, I wish that more people could share it. You know, I. It's just uh, I hate to see one person with all that kind of all that money when there's so many people out there that can use it, need it, you know, including myself. What the heck? Yep. So, but uh, yeah, that's gambling. That's lottery. That's that's uh, how it works. And uh, hopefully, hopefully one day we'll all be winners for something. But it's really not money that that makes you happy. You know, happiness truly comes from within. And uh, you got to feel good about yourself and do the right things about do the right things in life and hit, live a good, healthy, happy life. And you'll be richer than anybody with all the money in the world because if you don't have your health and you're not happy, money ain't going to be able to buy it. I can guarantee you that. I also want to go back and give uh, my friend Carl at BG's a plug again. The best, it's the best pizza pizza in the Northwest Side. So if you get a chance. Get over there and over at BG's on Irving Park Road there, just west a couple blocks west of Harlem, and uh, have a pizza. Tell them Big Joe sent you, and uh, tell them you want a free topping or two. Tell them you want something for free. It drives him nuts when you ask him for free stuff. You know he's a he's, a, he's an old Italian guy. Uh, not that old, but he's an Italian guy. And, you know they they like to they don't like to give out nothing in those places. They want you to pay for everything. So tell them you want something for free, or you're not eat or you're not ordering. And tell him Big Joe said so. And I guarantee you he'll give you whatever you want. Well, he'll give you a free topping or something, not whatever you want. So uh, go go visit Carl over at BG's. Have a pizza. I guarantee you you're going to love it. He's got the best pizza on the northwest side. And I uh, also want to once again thank Kevin over at Ridgewood High School at Jack FM 89.7 WRHS Norwich FM. Uh, really appreciate all you do. Thanks for the call earlier. And, uh, John, Merry Christmas to you. I wish you all the best, and thank you for letting me uh, do this broadcasting. Well, Joe, you're a, you're a great friend. We were great friends when we were at WJJG, and we used to come in and do the morning show with me uh, right. uh, there. And, um, and of course, not only in our in a broadcast career, but uh, uh, you also helped me with the different things around my home here and uh, in, you know, putting up... Uh, uh, my little deck for my uh, screen house and uh, the shelf here for for the equipment here and the uh, that hasn't fallen down yet, huh? No, it's still it's still hanging there yet. <laughs> it's still there. Well, yet, the so. warranty's over, just yeah. so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, again, Joe, you you've been a special friend. You've been a very good friend. You and Tom Michaels uh, also. You guys yeah. were great. I enjoyed, and I can't think of the name of that. Uh, that uh, place up there uh, where you used to get the the can- cannoli shells yeah. and that. Uh, I can I'll, see it, but I can't. I yeah, can't. it's right on the corner there of Mannheim yeah. and uh, Lake Street on the um, north side of the street, uh, uh, east of uh, Mannheim. Yeah, right, right, yep, right. Yep. I've gone in there several times yeah, to get uh, to got get good, very good cannolis. I love stuff. cannolis, and of course, yeah. uh, now at uh, this time of the year, my sister makes cannolis. Yes. And oh boy, I could eat, I could eat that for, I can make yeah. a meal out of that. You like your sweets, I know that. Oh yes, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, very merry Christmas to you, uh, John and uh, Kevin. Again, and all you listeners out there, uh, very merry Christmas to you and your families. Uh, enjoy it. Have do a safe, safe holiday. Um, try to do one thing special for somebody, and try to do a lot of special things for yourself. And this is Big Joe with Opinion, and I just want to thank you for listening. And a very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to all. Bye-bye now. You have been listening to Opinions with Joe Rouse from the John Nevada Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network. 
This broadcast was directed by John Vitta, and our audio engineer is James Rohde. This program was pre-recorded on Tuesday, December the 17th, the year 2013. Be safe, and thanks for listening.